What's happening guys, Silent Mike, and before we dive into the video, something that comes up all the freaking time, the two, probably the two most common questions are, I've taken a long hiatus from the gym, two months, three months, maybe six months, maybe even years, how do I get back in, what do I do, and I'm a real beginner, I've kind of messed around with some cardio, but I've never gone to the gym, how do I begin, how do I start strength training for strength, aesthetics, how do I look better, how do I perform better, how do I lift more weight, and instead of doing a video, I gathered up with the Kaizen boys, Omar Isaf, Bart Kwan, and basically what we did is we designed an absolutely free four-week program that's available right now. Totally free, costs you nothing, for beginners, or if you've taken a really long break, a nice hiatus from the gym, and you're trying to get back into strength training, check it out now. It's available, it is free, kaizentraining.com, K-I-Z-E-N training.com. Link's in the bio, check it out. I hope you guys enjoy, and I hope you enjoy the video. Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike back with another video. Today we're gonna to talk about breaking through plateaus, some ways I can help you. Uh, this is from a comment in the YouTube video, so I'm gonna take all the answers and kind of direct them towards my man. So if you want your questions answered, if you want some help, some education, some entertainment, be sure to leave your comments below. Let me know what you wanna know, what you want me to cover in the next couple coming videos. Be sure to do me a favor, you guys have been great. Let's see if we can get a thousand likes on this video. Be sure to subscribe, new videos Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, and brand new podcast every single Wednesday diving in. Today we're talking plateau. So my man says, Mike, I wonder if I could talk about how to dig yourself out of a plateau. I started with 531 at the beginning of the year and all my lifts continue to improve apart from the squat. In actual fact, my squat progressed stalled uh, recently and has now regressed. What's going on? Oh, what's going on? What's going on? Oh, what's going on? Little Marvin. Ugh. Bill Withers, Marvin. If you guys aren't listening to Marvin and Bill Withers, I don't know what generation you are. They're obviously before my generation, but they will change your mood, change your life, and give you a little bit of soul, I, I highly suggest. So, um, plateaus. Common things in plateaus. Most common things are probably uh, people not following a program, not following a solid enough program that doesn't allow enough frequency or volume, uh, not enough recovery, and recovery is a huge topic on Instagram. Everyone's throwing you guys supplements and gimmicks to help your recovery. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm basically talking about food and sleep, uh, enough protein, enough carbs, to f enough protein to recover, enough carbs to fuel your workout, uh, and enough sleep consistently. And I'm not talking, oh, I got seven, seven hours Monday through Thursday, and then you're raging all weekend where you get three hours while you're drunk, uh, which isn't quality sleep. So pay attention to those. And then last, uh, I think that's it. Those are the main two. There may be some technique stuff, um, but if you've been lifting for a year or more, you know, I doubt that's the limiting factor. Uh, normally, the more volume and frequency you get, obviously, you, better get, you, you get better at technique. Um, so that's not going to be number one. Um, 531 in particular, great strength program. Uh, Jim Wendler, I don't know if he did it or the internet did it, but obviously a great job marketing. Uh, and it's a overall solid scheme. Uh, now, I would never bash Jim. He has an insanely uh, smart guy, insanely great reach, but he was writing a general strength program. Now, if your goal is to increase your one rep max and the squat bench deadlift as a raw lifter, uh, I highly suggest doubling, if not tripling, your frequency in all three of those lifts. Now, the deadlift typically one to three times, depending on the athlete, how advanced you are. Um, squat anywhere from two to four, maybe even five times a week, and then bench, same thing, two to four, maybe even five times a week, depending on the individual, uh, because it depends on what you can recover from, kind of your body weight, what you can handle, uh, obviously genetics, but your schedule, if you can only get an hour or half an hour workout in, you might have to do more workouts uh, to get more frequency in rather than three bench days that take an hour. You can do four bench days that take half an hour to 45 minutes, spreading out that volume. Uh, but the majority of people that are plateauing that I've noticed are probably just not following a solid enough program and they're not being honest with themselves. Uh, maybe you set your one rep max too high where you hit a 400 pound squat, but it was high, it was slow, it was ugly, rather than the most efficient one rep max. And this is mostly beginners. Um, but if you hit 375 and you put that into a program and now you're using weights properly in training, uh, plus the sleep stuff. Sleep is number one uh, when it comes to recovery for almost all athletes. So another question on another day. So for my man, I would find a new program. I would get more frequency, more volume, and then obviously pay attention to the nutrition and, and sleep. Uh, I saw another question a different day about how I deal with stress. I was doing a Q&A on Instagram. Follow me, sell my 2Ks. Um, go like all my photos. It makes me feel good about my existence. Uh, what people were talking about was stress 
and how you deal with it. And I think they're mainly not talking about lifting. They're just talking about me and my life and stuff like that. Um, but relating this to the question is that we kind of have a pool of stress or a gas tank or a fuel tank of stress that we can handle as human beings. And each person's different in what you go through life. It may change. It may grow. It may get, get smaller. You may start with a four, four gallon tank, like a little motorcycle. And then one day you have a, you know, 18 gallon tank, like your big old F-350. But point being is that training is a stress. We're throwing stress at our body. Uh, obviously, it's a little bit more physical than mental, but the mental aspect is also the same. Um, being disciplined in your nutrition, being disciplined in your life, saying no to that extra beer, saying no to that chicken, all these things, plus obvious life things, right? Relationships, financial stuff, kids, cousins, family, work, all these stresses, vacation, planning, whatever, all these stresses are tapping into the same fuel tank. And so we start to get too drained on this fuel tank um, from potentially things that have zero to do with lifting, you know, dealing with your mother, dealing with your siblings, dealing with your, you know, significant others or your partners. Um, all these stresses start to affect our training in the long run. And sometimes they'll be quick and you might notice like, man, I, I just, everything feels heavy today, but chances are it's going to be slow over time. And so the whole process of this lifestyle that I like to live, that I like to teach with you guys that I like to share is kind of a little bit obsessive, but what we try to do is analyze everything going on in our life. And we try to not only optimize it, but try to find ways that we can, can be content and live uh, happy and through everything we do. So, you know, routine helps me a lot. Um, and that helps a lot of people, I think, with their nutrition and their lifting and their sanity. Uh, and then just, you know, making decisions based on what is best for you and your very close loved ones will allow you to hopefully have less of that stress. Uh, and then obviously progress always feels good. I feel like progress, um, I preach about it being the main goal, but maybe it shouldn't be the main goal. Maybe progress should be our icing on the cake. And our main goal is just to have that cake. You know, we're all very lucky. Uh, anyone watching this YouTube video is in a spot where you have 10 minutes to waste watching my fat face. Uh, so we're all very, you know, should be uh, very thankful in, 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 in the scheme of things, very grateful for what we have. Um, so that's kind of the cake and focusing in on keeping that cake together, make sure it's not dry, not too moist. You want a dense cake, but you don't want it too dense. You definitely don't want a light cake because then it just tastes like, like a muffin and nobody really wants a crumbly cake. And, you know, I, I digress. Uh, but controlling those stresses, doing what's best for you in the long run, your health, your stress, mental and physical uh, will both allow you that progress in the gym and hopefully allow you progress in your in your other things, your relationships, your business and your social life. So. That's that for me. Got a little deep there. I appreciate you guys. All the questions on Instagram are sick. All the questions here, I absolutely love it. So comment below. Let me know. I'll cover it in the next video. Sound like I'm out.